Welcome back to Math Concepts. We are continuing our work in the mathematics behind personal finance. In previous videos, we have talked about stocks and bonds. And in this video, we are going to discuss mutual funds, which is another kind of investment that you've probably heard about. So, as we have discussed, when you deal with stocks, you are buying a fraction of that company. You kind of own a piece of the company now when you have stock in a company. So that investment might work out well for you. You might get paid dividends. That company might do well and the stock price rises and you could sell at a profit. But of course you're also risking the company doing poorly and the stock price going down, in which case you lose money. Uh, similarly, bonds also have risks. Remember, a bond is like a simple interest loan, typically to a government. And with any loan, the risk is that the person who borrowed the money from you might not pay you back. So, since each of these individual investment tools have risks, the average investor might be better off going into a pool with a bunch of other investors so that they can buy varied things instead of just buying stock in a single company buy stock in many companies hopefully they'll won't all do badly some of them might do badly but other ones will do well so you should still be okay so these mutual funds are a way of investors pooling together to kind of mitigate that risk. So let's look at a couple of example concepts involving mutual funds. Okay, so the key idea for this video is to be able to find and use something called the net asset value for a mutual fund. Okay, so remember, when we do a mutual fund, it's a bunch of people pooling all their money together to invest in lots of different stocks. Okay. So, just one thing I want to note here. When you're doing net asset value, you have to take the total assets, subtract the liabilities, and then divide that quantity by the total number of shares that the mutual fund has. So let's look at this example right here. So we'll pretend a mutual fund has $750 million worth of stock, $750,000 in cash, and $1.5 million in other assets. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to total all those out. Okay, so I'm going to use my calculator here for that. So 750 million. So that'd be 750 followed by six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, and finally six. Okay, so that's 750 million right there. I got the 750 and then one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Plus... 750123. That's 750,000. Plus 15 1.5 million dollars. Okay, so that's the total assets. Okay, so that is Okay, so I did my calculation there. That was the assets, $752,250,000 in total assets that I got by adding up those three numbers. Now we have to subtract the total liabilities and then divide by the total number of shares. Okay, now it looks like I forgot to write that down, so I'll add it right now. There are 20 million shares of 
out. Okay, so we have to take that number from the top and divide by 20 million. So we take 752,250,000, we subtract 1,500,000, press equals, and then we divide that by 20 million. Okay, so I am getting $37.54. Okay, so that is the net asset value, which is like the value of one share. Okay, let's take this example one step further here. Suppose you look at this mutual fund and you say, okay, I want in. I want to participate in that pool of investors. And let's imagine that you want to invest $10,000 in this fund. How many shares would you be purchasing? Well, we just saw that a share was worth $37.54. So you want to take your $10,000 and divide it up into shares, each worth $37.54. So you're dividing this way. Okay, so you can buy 266.38 shares, okay? You can buy partial shares of a mutual fund, that's okay. I do it all the time, okay? Every month I invest $500 in a certain mutual fund. It doesn't always get me a whole number of shares. Sometimes I get fractional amounts of shares. So if this person invested $10,000 into this mutual fund that we discussed up here. We found the net asset value is $37.54, so that's the value of one share. So this person's $10,000 would buy 266.38 shares. Okay, so that's the basics behind using net asset value.